I am Ruth Ann Thorne, and I've been an art dealer for more than two decades, working with artists from all over the world. I've always wondered, do artists create from within, or are they influenced by their surroundings? And why did they choose where they live? What do they get from their environment? If they were to live somewhere else, would their art be different? These are the questions we will answer as we explore cities across the country in Art of the City. I am Ruth Ann Thorne. I'm a tribal member here at Rincon Band of Luceno Indians. And today I'm gonna to bring you a special episode of Art of the City, which you'll see about how these tribes are supporting artists within Indian country and how they're bringing the traditions of the tribe into the public eye through art and culture. So join me for Art of the City, Indian Country. Southern California where I'm going to meet with one of the most important tribal leaders, Chairman Cody Martinez of the Sequan Band of the Kumeyaay Nation. We're very excited to see how Sequan has supported the arts and is continuing to bring art and culture into the tribe and also into public spaces so that everyone can learn about what it means to be Kumeyaay. Uh, my name is Cody Martinez, as you mentioned, and I'm the elected chairman of the Sequan Band of the Kumeyaay Nation. And 2020 will be the sixth year uh, that I've been in office. What is it like? I know you have two kind of two different roles. Sure. You have tribal government, where you're, you know, overseeing things for the actual people here, your people, the yeah. Kumeyaay Nation. But also, you have this whole other hat you have to wear, which is a business hat. Yes. What is that like? So as tribes have, have developed and l become a little bit more sophisticated, a number of tribes have developed uh, economic development uh, companies that are in charge of diversifying their business interests outside of gaming. So Quan, a little bit old school, the tribal council still retains day-to-day -day oversight of the management team for the casino. Wow. Uh, the casino resort is still our major economic engine. I think it will remain so for the foreseeable future. But uh, you built. remember what it was like when there was no resource pretty much i mean other than people going out getting a job outside um, there wasn't a lot on the reservations as far as opportunities before gaming um, you know the infrastructure was very poor a lot of trailers a lot of government housing uh, not a lot of opportunity not a lot of employment alcoholism drug abuse those things were there when you were a kid did you have an attachment to culture or had that been stripped away or what do you remember about learning about what it meant to be part of of being Native American, which is, you know, being Kumeyaay. Sure. The younger years, it's hard to remember specific cultural events. I think in the 80s and early 90s is probably the time that everybody can agree amongst all the communities where the culture was at a very low point. Right. Uh, the Kumeyaay Nation is, is, takes pride in their bird songs and their bird dancing on, on that side of it. And at one point there was, there was less than a handful of, of known singers. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, a, like I said, a, a low point. And since then, especially with the ability of gaming to be able to put on powwows and gatherings and put all the resources, um, the culture has definitely made a, a recovery. The first time I, I don't know, I realized, wow, um, you know, we were here from the beginning and then we've become an occupied sure. country. I mean, it, it, I don't know why you always kind of know that, but to really think about, think about immigrants, people immigrated to this country from all over, but we didn't. Right. And when you start thinking about that, what was your feeling about the culture and you identifying as a native Kumeyaay person? For me, the native history was, was very sad, learning about the plight of Native Americans and the lack of resources and just the, the constant generation. You know, my children's generation represents the sixth generation born since this reservation was created in 1875. One of the most important things for me is trying to not, to, to know your history, know the wrongs, and, and learn from it, but don't mm -hmm. dwell on it to where you feel like you're a victim. Yes. Because the Native American people are not victims. We talk about being survivors. Yes. And there's a, a great story that comes along with that, and people need to know that 
you got to build on those on um, those trials and tribulations that came before. I love that. Yeah. How did that come together with figuring out what are you going to show the world when they come to stay at the hotel within the art? So this was a major investment for us and probably the biggest investment we'll make in, in under my you know leadership. We had to take a serious approach to how we wanted to, to infuse cultural elements in the build. But I think the initial work that we've done brings brings subtle underpinnings of, of the Native American culture, which is which is natural. Native Americans are natural people of the earth. Right. And so you'll see in a lot of the guest rooms, you'll see imagery of oak trees, which was a staple of the acorn for the Kumeyaay and a lot of California Native tribes. Without the oak tree, they wouldn't have survived. And also a lot of visuals of uh, nature and landscape that are from around the reservation. Reflections on, on landscape and, and animals, uh, red tail hawk and others, that, that are important. Mm -hmm. uh, culturally to, to the Kumeyaay people. This piece is a perfect example of one of those paintings that was brought into this build here at Siquan that represents who the Kumeyaay people are. This is the landscape, the terrain, that was taken to an artist that brought in a modern rendition of the land that's been here, 14,000 years documented. So the tribe really took a lot of time and effort to think this through, and this is an example of one of those beautiful cultural pieces. that one of the big projects you're working on right now is one to honor these elders yes. that have, what are your thoughts? Because that could be really tricky. <laughs> no, it definitely is. So the reservation is made up of, of uh, about five or six large families and historically that's kind of been the case. Okay. And so we want to be able to represent uh, a lot of the you know, patriarchs or matriarchs of those families that have either been in leadership roles or been just great pillars of the community over mm. time. Yeah. You folks are so much about pouring back into the community, mm. pouring back into the arts, and then casinos are not just about employing folks, but you're bringing in some very big acts. We opened here with Macklemore on our on our opening, and we've had you know Tony Bennett, others you know come in, and we've been able to put on a, on a great show. The gaming business is an entertainment business, and to us, we have to be able to have not just the best and newest machines, but great customer service, great food, great entertainment. Uh, even if you're not a gamer, you've got to be able to come and have a great time. <laughs> The U.S. grant is a, is a long story, but a very proud story of, of the nation to be able to. So a little historical connection is the, the hotel was built in 1910 by the son of the former president, Ulysses S. Grant, the Civil War general. Um, and Ulysses S. Grant, the president, was the president who signed the executive order in 1875, creating, I believe, nine or 11 reservations in Southern California at the time, and Saquon was one of them. The infusion of the culture in that property also, I think, was done in a very uh, subtle but elegant way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think some of the things we were able to do down there as we continue to, you know, the property's historic, so a lot of things are going to stay, you know, timeless and elegant, the marble, the chandeliers, mm -hmm. and I think the way we can utilize finishes and still infuse the culture and do it in a tasteful way. I noticed that you have these absolutely gorgeous bronze sculptures. Yes of Kumeyaay, mm -hmm. um, and then I love the way that you pay tribute again to the leaders, you know, all of the, um, the former chairs, yes, including kind of, yourself, yes. which, you know. No, definitely, that, that was great to be able to see um, the, the, the drawings, representation of the, the headshots of, again, you're talking over 80 years of tribal leadership on that wall. This incredible sculpture greets you as you're coming into the U.S. Grant. It's a bronze sculpture of a Kumeyaay maiden and probably one of the most incredible sculptures I've seen in Indian country to date. So this is again one of those beautiful masterpieces that Saquon Band of the Kumeyaay Nation has taken their resources, supported Native artists, and brought in things so that the public can be exposed to their history and their culture, and also to just 
give such a beautiful centerpiece as people come in. We had been conditioned for so many years mm -hmm. to, you know, not become too public. But it's so beautiful now to see the arts and the culture being pushed forward because now we're proud. I've been told, you know, we need to focus on community and culture just as much as business, and I understand that completely. But without the business and the <laughs> revenues, yes. you wouldn't be able to do a lot of these things are definitely not the way we want to do mm -hmm. them. Um, so I think we could continue to build on it. Um, I just want to be able to pr build a more progressive community. Driving on to my native land is an amazing experience every time because it makes me think about 14,000 years documented my people lived here. And today I'm really excited to be able to meet with my tribal chairman, Chairman Bo Mazzetti of the Rincon Band of Luceno Indians, and hear how we are preserving our art and culture through the casino, through the projects that we're involved in, and most importantly, our ability to now preserve that culture for the next generation. What is the primary role of being the chairman of a tribe? Well, if under federal law, if you use federal law, which we go by, obviously, uh, the chairman of each tribe in the state of California is equivalent to or equal to the governor of the state of California. The vice chair is equal to the lieutenant governor for the state of California. Same uh, recognition under federal law. Uh, then the council basically are, are the assembly and senate uh, versions, a uh, lot smaller. So is that where they get the term Indian country because it is in fact its <clears throat> own governmental system under this land that's designated? Uh, theoretically, all of California is Indian country. You know. True. <laughs> but when you get into the legal status and legal standings, then you get into the fact that uh, a tribe is a sovereign, what they call a, a political sovereign within the United States. We also have to generate businesses and oversee business development. The land actually is held in trust. In other words, the ownership will rest with the United States government. We don't have land. For example, you cannot go get a loan and then maybe use the land as collateral. Okay. So that's always been on reservations throughout the nation. That's why it's been hard to start businesses, even for individuals, because you have no collateral. You can't put the land up uh, uh, as, as collateral, for example, for a portion of the land even. So when you were a kid, there weren't any businesses here? No, no. There so were dinosaurs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably. No, no. Probably some dinosaur yeah, bones yeah, anyway, for yeah. sure, right? But, uh, no, but, it was totally different. So totally what was different. it like? Give us a, a picture. When you and my dad, yep. when you guys were growing up, what did it look like as far as, you know, just your early memories, but also what was the um, economic structure like here? Well, everybody pretty much farmed because that's the only way to generate any income here. But other than that, there was no business here. Uh, obviously, uh, you learned how to do everything yourself. What about the culture? Do you rem were were we practicing things? I know my great grandfather, you know, had talked to me about the burning yeah. of clothes and various things. But did did you experience growing up with we, the language we, or we, any? We, well, we had it, but see, you got to remember a lot of the folks back then, the older folks, didn't want you to speak the language. They thought, okay, you got to assimilate. Uh, my grandmother one thought you should, you know, you don't really need to know it uh, because you know not an Indian world anymore, it's a white world, so to speak, right. so they didn't encourage it. It slipped out, they spoke the language from time to time, but right. then you also got to remember that, like my parent, my dad, and, and those that went to Sherman Indian High School, if you spoke the language, they would beat you, literally beat you. Right. So that was kind of beat out of a lot of, in your, like my dad's age group, uh, so it wasn't spoke a lot. Uh, we've since brought the language back, brought back more of the culture, more mm -hmm. of the traditions, um, but that's what I'm proud of, seeing those restored, introducing them to our younger, newer uh, tribal members. Right. Uh, and that's an ongoing thing. I right. mean, you, you've got to put it out there and gradually train our own people. It is survival of the culture, survival of the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, 
because the arts display uh, the history. Don't forget the past, you know, bring it right. forward with you. Uh, and teach our own people have to be taught this stuff. And because we have a lot of folks that are, don't know a lot of it, mm -hmm. which is our fault then. We need to uh, start educating our own folks, which we're doing, as, as I mm -hmm. said. But I think one of the, the biggest things for me is you, the way I was taught. You got a certain period of time, you get to be leader. And I say get to be, because that's up to the people. But then what you do is set it for the next generation, make it sure it's better, get things in place, just like those before me you know, did. And you share it. You share the tradition, you share the culture, you share the art, you share the, the goal. And it's for the tribe, not individuals. I may be chairman, but I'm there for the tribe, not there for me. You know, and that's what we got to keep in mind. What are you there for? And again, teaching, making the next generation better. That's what it's all about. If you're doing a good job, I do. Now I'm heading over to the casino where I will meet with our vice chairwoman, Tishmal Turner. Tishmal grew up on the reservation, so she is very connected with the art and culture here. She's also responsible for the sculpture project that is allowing Native artists to be shown here in our casino. And it allows us to share our culture of who we are as Luceno people with the public. I look at around our reservation and I look at our government center and I look at you know things that I have experienced growing up here on the reservation and art has always been part of our culture right. but it's also a way for us to be able to share that with um, our tribal members and our community um, you know when I look and it, you see these uh, art displays that are a reflection of our ancestors, but they're contemporary, and it's also going to leave and tell a story about our people yes. for future generations. Mm -hmm. So how did this piece come about? This is um, a woman, and those are baskets up there, and it's um, the Milky Way, and the significance in that is that we believe in our stories that each when person passes into their next stage of their journey that they're in the stars in the milky way it also you know this is not just a traditional casino it, you know it's looking did not reflect our native culture or our presence but it's also important to share that with people that are coming out here to learn a little bit more about what's important to the luceno people would you say that it gives people a sense of pride? It does. You know, you start feeling a sense of belonging and other people start having a better understanding of uh, who you are as a people. It takes a lot to create a bronze sculpture, not only in the talent, but it's also financially mm -hmm. a big investment. When you create a bronze sculpture like this, it's gonna be here forever. Right, and the so. tribe made a commitment to um, work with artists and produce one piece of art a year for five years okay. to put throughout the casino property. You know, sometimes things are hard to talk about or difficult to talk about, and they can be shared through art. Yes. And um, I really like that. Within any Native tribe, we end up all being related and we are a family. And within that family, you have certain people that stand out because they're so passionate about culture and language. And Lori Gonzalez, who is one of our council women, is definitely been one that has spearheaded many initiatives, including our museum. She has such a passion for what it means to be a Luceno woman, and I love listening to her stories. How did that passion start for the arts and um, your love for not only art, but making sure that people are aware of the history here? I started becoming aware of that where was our representation? Right. Aside from beadwork and buckskin, I know that we're artistic people within my family, your family, right. and we're, we're yeah. our families commingled. Where was all of that? Except at a trading post. And seeing the artifacts 
the things from our past that were so artistically made, and even the stories, because to me, you know, a story is something you paint with words. That's art right. too. Yes. And I thought we need to we need to expose this. We need to bring this to the forefront. We are we need for everyone to see this because it's amazing. So that's where my passion came from. Our people need to know from us what their culture is, not from a school book or a professor cross country who read something and wrote a paper. We want to tell our own story. Well, how do you tell your story? You bring the things that the ancestors had, that they created, the baskets, art, the, the petroglyphs, mm -hmm. art, the stories, again, art, mm -hmm. all this into one room and say, this is us. The most important part of that is being able to share our identity and to learn it for ourselves. What are we famous for? Baskets. So we have a basket weaver. And then the dignified man right there was taken from a photograph of an actual Rincon ancestor. So they greet you. You come in the door and there's that feeling of con continuity. From then to now, we're still here. We're thriving. We're, we're, we're not just existing. Right. We're really living now, you know, to the fullest. I love looking at them. I love seeing those faces and saying that was then, this is now, we're still going strong. Art has always been an important part of what it means to be Native American. But as you can see here, the tribes have not forgotten that. You can see that the tribes that have been shown here today, although very prosperous, are pouring back into art and culture in such a unique way. And I think that the significance of art really shows that we're still here as a people. We still remain, our stories are still being told, and it really gives everybody an opportunity to understand what it means for us as Native Americans to be progressive within the culture that we're living in today. So I hope you enjoyed Art of the City, Indian Country, and I hope you join us again.